testing one two three four I went back to see my dad at the end of July. He's uh, 91. He's got cancer So I went back to see how he was doing and uh, I was supposed to come back on a Wednesday This was near the end of July. I think and uh, I took my uh, sister and my dad out for some Chinese food Yeah Got home that night Man, I had a pain right here in my stomach. Bad. I was tired. I thought, well, I'm going to take a three hour nap. I got up. I still wasn't feeling well. Started doing the Tums. The next morning uh, was Wednesday. I flew home and wasn't feeling too good, so I went to bed. Thursday, I had a couple counseling appointments. I got up and came down here. And in the middle of the first counseling session, this thing fired up again, and I couldn't make it. And so I went home, slept for the rest of the day. I got up uh, Friday morning, and I man, I'm not feeling well. I better go to urgent care. Went to urgent care. They'd run a bunch of tests on me, and they said, hey, dude, your gallbladder is about to blow. And he said, uh, you need to go from my office now over to the emergency room. I said, uh, is it that, it's that bad? He said, yeah. I said, the, don't worry about it. Gallbladder is an easy operation. Everybody has a gallbladder surgery. No big deal. You can live without a gallbladder. I thought that was weird. You know, why did God give me a gallbladder if I didn't need it? <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'll take your word for it. So I stumbled over to J.C. Lincoln Hospital north. Up on Deer Valley there, you know, and sat in the emergency room for uh, three hours. Finally got in. I had brought my medical records with me, and I said, hey, I, I need an emergency gallbladder surgery, whatever that is. No problem. We do those. Took me back in, put me in a room, <laughs> laid around there for two hours. Nurse come in. Hey, why are you in here? I said, <clears throat> I'm supposed to have an emergency gallbladder surgery. Okay, now I'm starting to sense I'm in a little trouble. Well, it didn't long after that. I go, they cart me off to another room. I get a doctor. They schedule me for surgery. And I had forgotten that I was in a trauma center. And uh, that means they get any kind of patient over there, right? And uh, so people were coming in, you know, gunshots axes in their heads different things and obviously that's going to bump a gallbladder surgery with an axe in your head so finally the next day i got my surgery schedule and the doctor comes in and says hey you're going in in about an hour or so oh that'd be great he says now it's just a gallbladder surgery no big deal uh we we do them we put four holes in your Stomach now, it's no, we don't cut them open anymore. It's a 45-minute operation, slam dunk deal, short recovery period. And I'm thinking, I'm not even going to have to cancel really that many counseling appointments. I've, you know, I might miss one teaching, no, no problem at all. I said to the doctor, have you ever had any... Uh, gallbladder surgeries go bad on you. I mean, is there anything can go bad during the surgery? So, oh, yeah, every surgery has bad stuff. Uh, this and that and that has happened before. I said, well, has it ever happened to any of your patients? Oh, yeah, I've had three or four bad uh, cases. And I said, well, what happened? Well, we did this and that, and they recovered, and everything's fine. But, you know, 99% of the time, it's a slam dunk. You'll be fine. I said, oh, I wasn't thinking anything of it. I was expecting to come home, click, click, like the next day. You know, I wasn't making any plans to stay at John C. Lincoln Hospital. I get into the surgery room finally, and they get in there to go get the gallbladder, and this thing shot. My gallbladder is disintegrating while they're taking it out. It's got pus in it. It's got infection in it. It's got various levels of crap in it. That's a medical term. And the poison or whatever the crap is in there is now seeping around in homey. 
I get back to my room and I've got needles stuck in me, bags of stuff going into me. Uh, they said, hey, the, the gallbladder, we got most of it out, but it's, there's, you're, it's an infection. Now you've got to have all this medication. Uh, you're going to need this and that and blah, blah, blah. The next day they took me in for a, a lung biopsy. So they, you know, stick a tube in your lung, pull out a bunch of, you know, a cup of stuff. And it, it's yellow, it kind of looks like urine. And uh, it's infection. And my light, right lung is filling up now. So they said, you're going to have to go in for a second surgery. Oh, great. They go in for the second surgery. They stick two tubes in my lungs back here. One of them's connected to a box, draining out this yellow fluid. Two liters of it initially. And then it starts seeping out after that, you know. Then there's another tube in there. It was a dual tube job. The second tube had this, was a little bag about that big, and it had, looked like it had prune juice in it. That was seeping out of my back. While I was having this operation, they had to call in a bunch of other doctors because I had a pre-existing condition. The next morning, the cardiologist told me I had a heart condition. I said, I'm thinking, this guy's going to milk the insurance for everything this thing is worth. I've never had a problem with my heart in my whole life. That's ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with my heart. I said, what's wrong with my heart, doc? And he goes, you have a, a regular, irregular heart arrhythma. I said, this, this guy must think I was born at night. That's made up. Nobody has a regular, irregular heart arrhythma. Okay, he's, he, this is an insurance scam. So I'm playing along with the guy. I said, well, how does that work? Oh, he says, you can have this condition uh, and not even know you have it. Some people are born with it. And I said, well, I get a physical every year. I get an EKG. Not, how come then? Oh, it won't show up on an EKG. Oh, great. That's interesting. And I said... Doc, I'm not feeling too well, to say the least. I had this stabbing, knifing pain in my back from these tubes going in there. And my heart rate had gone crazy. It was like 160 beats a minute. So now the hospital is scared to death that I'm going to have a heart attack or a stroke. So now I got more of these bags on these racks. One of them's for uh, infection. What is it? What do they call it stuff for infection? Antibiotic. Antibiotic bags, heart condition bags. They're trying to get my heart to slow down. My blood pressure's going crazy. It's all going bad. At about two o'clock in the morning the next the next day, I'm laying in bed and the devil got me. I was so sick, I literally couldn't believe it. I'd never been that sick before in my life. And I started uh, having questions. I started questioning myself. Uh, years ago, the Lord told me I was getting a deliverance revival, and I believed it. And I had all, all kinds of other things that I knew was going to happen, but now I was questioning everything. And I started questioning myself, and then I, I started questioning my own life. I felt like I was going to die. It was weird. I thought, well, maybe I missed a cue somewhere. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I didn't read the Lord properly. Maybe, uh, I'm, maybe I am going to die. Maybe I was supposed to work here for a while and then someone else was going to take over. And things were, you know, I had all these weird thoughts coming through my head. And then while I was laying in bed about two in the morning, a strange light shot through my room. It was weird. And then up on the ceiling there, there was this weird uh, fluffy manifestation of something. I started thinking, oh great, now the demons are coming for me. And I'm not in the mood for the demons because I was, I was not feeling well. And the next morning, the cardiologist came in and I said, hey doc, uh, 
how's that regular irregular heartbeat doing? <laughs> yeah, I knew he was lying. I know an insurance scam when I see him. I used to work in, in insurance years ago. And he goes, at 4 o'clock in the morning, it disappeared. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I don't know. It just disappeared and it, it left. I said, yeah. he said, uh, all your vital signs returned to normal. Your heart rate's fine now. There's no sign of a irregular, regular heartbeat uh, thing, whatever that was. I think he submitted his bill, so now it was time to get rid of it. But I looked at all my vital signs, oxygen good, blood pressure normal, heart rate normal, everything normal. I've got, still got this massive stabbing pain in my back. But from that moment on, when I talked to that doctor, I changed my attitude. And I, it clicked over. And I said, wait a minute, I did not misread this thing. This is going to happen. I'm going to live. This is a blip on the screen. I'm going to fully recover. And I'm going to win this thing. After he told me that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's right. As soon as I heard I got rid of my irregular, regular heartbeat. Some of you may have it. You may not know it because there's no symptoms. And... <laughs> There's a heavy billing for it. <laughs> After that, I started to get out of my bed. And I would get up and I would walk like my dad could outrun me now. I got on the walker. I could hardly stand up. I had difficulty walking. And I was walking up and down the halls saying to myself, I got to get out of here. When I first got in there, a nurse says to me, you know, it's not a very pleasant thing to come to a hospital. After she said that, I knew I was in deep trouble. I said, I've got to get out of this place because I, I couldn't stand it there anymore. I'd been laying in bed for seven or eight or nine days. I hadn't had a bowel movement in a week. Man, that's some pretty good constipation. <laughs> Uh, I was having to pee in this plastic container, it had a little handle on it, and all this medication, they had turned me into a Walgreens pharmacy. I had so much dope flowing through me, you wouldn't even believe, I mean, it's unbelievable. The blood people from the lab come in like Dracula, and they constantly stick needles in your arm. It's unbelievable. Well, this arm here started to develop strange my muscles started to turn hard like they were dying or something so they had to put a warning on this no blood out of this hand well then this one here it didn't have any veins left so I told him I don't want to give any more blood oh that set off alarm system in the hospital oh everybody all shook up now I don't I don't have any veins left there's nothing to stick here no we've got to keep sticking oh they got all upset about it <clears throat> Well, I'm out there rolling around in the hallway trying to get my strength back and suddenly come down with a case of shingles. Never had shingles in my life. I'd heard other people had them. I didn't even know anything about them other than they hurt. Well, the doctor comes in. Hey, you're quarantined. I'm quarantined. Oh, can't wait. You can't leave this room. In addition, anybody that comes in the room has to put on these space suits so you don't pick up a, a touch and drip infection. That's what he, I said, this, this is ridiculous. I got to get out of here. And I mean fast. Several nights I'd woken up in the middle of the night, heaving sweat. And all my sheets and my, they were soaked. They never changed them. I'd sit there for two days in soaked sheets. I said, hey. I'd rather go soak my own sheets. Then I told him, I said, hey, listen, I got to get out of here. My blood pressure, this is okay, that's okay, this is okay, that's okay. I don't need to be in the hospital if I've got shingles. Why do I need to be hospitalized? People have shingles at home. That's a normal thing. I said, well, we want to check you out and do this and that. I said, I don't want to be checked out anymore. I said, do you have a sheet that I could sign that says uh, patients... Uh, refusing 
medical care and I'm getting the heck out of here. I can't take this anymore. I don't even know what the form's called. AMA? Is that what it's called? What? Against medical advice. Against medical advice. Yeah. Not the American Medical Association. No. <laughs> and they probably wrote it. Yeah. Well, as soon as I said that, oh, that set off more alarms. Uh, doctors started coming in and said, you know what? Yeah, you could probably be discharged and get out of here tomorrow. I got discharged and I went home. My poor wife, she, she's not here. She just, she just left. My poor wife had to take care of me. I got home and I put the first day I was home which was August 4th, I set some lofty goals for myself. Oh, I was, I was going to work my way through this. Goal number one, get to the bathroom. Sit on the bathroom stool and get up by myself. <laughs> there you go. The second big goal I had was to take a shower. Yes, sir. The third goal was to walk into the other living room and get in the easy chair. Fourth goal, Click, I got stuck listening to those Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, that made everything worse. <clears throat> the day before I left the hospital, the lung doctor comes in. He says, brother, he says, Mike, listen, we looked at your x-rays and this and that. He says, your lungs are not filling up anymore. I said, they're not? Great, well, take the, can I get these tubes pulled out of my back? He said, yeah, there's no reason we can't do that. And I said, well, can, what about right now? Right this second, let's do it right now. So I got up and bent over the bed and pulled my, you ever seen those hospital outfits? They're, they're lovely. <laughs> and the doctor goes, well, okay, yeah, I guess I can do it now. He calls somebody and bring me a tool in, bring me this in. Boop, boop. He tells me to hum while he's pulling them out. Just hum a little bit. Oh, okay, I'll humor this guy. Um, ew. I think he bandaged it up or something. I got out of there as fast as I possibly could. The first week I was home, I did nothing because I couldn't do anything. But a miracle happened. I had a bowel movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> victory. It smelled like victory. Wow. Oh, couldn't wait to get out of the hospital. My sheets were dry at home. Oh, I couldn't believe it. The second week, I said, you know, I'm going to live. i got to get through this. Started going back to the gym, hitting the weights. Next day, hit the pool. Next day, the weights, hit the pool. Next day, back and forth. Crawling back. Bad things happen for good reasons. Amen. And this thing has been a great blessing to me. I'm so glad it happened. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I've changed as a person. One thing I've changed in, I got a lot more compassion for people who are in the hospital. I was near death's door when I was in there, and there were people there sicker than me. And Mercy knocked on my hospital door, and... Mercy's going to knock on your door tonight. Amen. 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 All right. Our seminar is on familiar spirits. We do it every Halloween. They're the demons that are going to take over the planet when the Antichrist shows up. The website's getting staggering numbers of hits. A couple hundred thousand a month, somebody told me. It's going great. Thank you for your support. The radio programs are still going good, although I did miss, while I was sick, I did miss some radio programs, but I made it up. I'm back to normal now. You can catch all the radio programs on the uh, OmniFM.com website. It's on uh, my, my website. And my uh, radio programs there took a dive. I was over uh, 3,000 listeners a week there, and then it dropped down to like 300. But then I put the new ones on, so now it's going back. So I did lose some listeners there while I was sick. If you want to help us uh, financially, you can do that. When you buy stuff on Amazon, just put our name in and use smileamazon.com, and they'll pay us every time you buy something. And the same is true for Good Search. 
He can help us there. Tonight's uh, teaching will be on our YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. The miracle list you can now get on the website or you can send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, so you can do, get delivered at home. YouTubers, I've been gone a couple months, but uh, don't forget about your terror cells. You open up a uh, healing and deliverance group in your church, and then you start picking off the sick people and terrorizing the devil. Thank you for your donations. While I was sick, the donations went up. Uh, it's a miracle. You can also donate on the website. Thank you. I'll see you in Tucson for a healing and deliverance service at the Tucson City Center next month. We had a family come up here yesterday from Tucson. It was incredible what happened to that family. It was utterly amazing. Son got delivered and the mother got delivered. It was really something. God's merciful. Okay. Exceedingly, abundantly, above is our Bible study for tonight. Based on what scripture? This one. You know what it is. It says, Now unto him who was able to do exceedingly... Hooper is the Greek word that means above. If you're here, Hooper means he's there. All right? Exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond, Heresis, and above that. He's able to do above, beyond, and then above that. All you're able to ask or think. Right? And these verses are a lot more complicated than you think. But if you break them down, they make perfect sense. Iteo is the Greek word. It means to ask for something that you've already been told is yours. And you can have. It's not the Greek word used to ask for something like what time is it or where you want to eat that's an information question this one means to ask for something that you've already been promised and told you could have you're simply asking for something that's already yours by definition the person asking that way Already believes it. Will you help me? That's a different Greek word. You're asking a question to get some information and you're doubting. You're not sure they'll show up. You're not sure they'll drive you there. You're not sure they'll give you something. This word means you're asking for something that's already been promised to you that you can have. You're asking for it like it's already yours. Why is that important in the verse? It triggers above, beyond, and then above again. That's what triggers it. Lord, you think you could help me with this? Doesn't trigger it. Lord, will you help me? Doesn't trigger it. What are you asking for? No, ale is the Greek word. That doesn't mean you just think about something casually. It means to ponder it. God told you you could have it. And you pondered it. And now you're asking for it as if it's already yours. It 
If you casually read the verse in English, it appears to be false. Why well, ask? It never happened. It's how you ask and how you think. How is it all accomplished according to the what? Supernatural power dunamis is supernatural power That energeo that's a verb in Greek it means To energize the person like a battery inside the battery is energy stored that's where we would get our English word energy These miracles above beyond and then above that occur When your supernatural power of the Holy Ghost is triggered when you ask knowing it's already yours The energy is in the volcano But it's triggered when it blows Inside every volcano The energy is in there the lava is there the magma is there the heat the power But it doesn't do anything until it blows That's what that verse is saying Let's see it in action. Second Corinthians chapter 14. Let's go back uh, 3,000 years and go see King Asa. Abijah died, it says, and his son Asa replaced him as the king of Judah. Right? Now the kingdom is split back then. Israel is the northern kingdom, Judah is the southern kingdom. Asa is the king over the southern kingdom and his uh, Kingdom was quiet for ten years the first ten years of his kingdom doing great no wars Everything's cool Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord and the, in this text I didn't put it in here, but it goes through there and lists 22 Good things he did Very much like a born-again Christian who has his first love That ever happened to you Anybody ever have a born-again experience I mean a real one raise your hand did you have a first love period? Ah, Remember that all oh, that first love period was fantastic you wanted to do everything right for the Lord. You cared about him. You didn't want to screw up. You wanted to obey. You wanted to be with him. You wanted to do what was right. Uh, Asa is there with you. He's doing everything right. Asa had an army that was huge. All kinds of warriors, spear carriers, or spear chuckers, shields, bows, everything. He has all kinds of men of valor. Men of valor were people who were experienced in warfare. There came out against uh, them Zarah, the Ethiopian. Now we got a big problem here. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him, it says in that verse. Well, the Ethiopian king decides to wipe out Judah and he's got a much bigger army 1 million soldiers and on top of that 300 chariots which would be equivalent in World War two of tanks So now you've got a mismatch here and Judah and Asa are gonna lose They can't win he knows it then Asa went out against them 
and they set their way in battle. Yeah, this is kind of like fighting with relatives. You don't just start fighting, you kind of line up and yell at each other before it starts. You ever had a fight with a relative? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. lots of them. Yeah. People fighting with you all the time. <laughs> yeah, they line up, see, and they stare each other down. Yes, sir. It's like a rap video. You got to stare the guy down. Well, that's what they did back then. They would, uh, this army here would line up on that hill. These armies here would line up on that hood. And then the kings would make a decision on whether or not they wanted to get her done. That's what's happening here. It's a face-off. Asa takes a look at his competitor and uh, decides to do the right thing. He cries out to the Lord his God. Now in the King James Bible, which is the one I use, the capitalized Lord means when it's capitalized in the Old Testament, the word Lord is Yahweh. Okay? So they translated it Lord, capitalized. He cried to Yahweh his God, the Greek word is Elohim. He said, Lord, or Jehovah, it is nothing with you to help, whether there are many or whether those who have no power. What a great prayer. That's a smart prayer. You're telling God, you're acknowledging, hey, it's no contest with you. You got this thing covered. Help us, Lord. Then he says, we rest on you and in your name, and we go against this multitude, Lord. You are our God. Let not man prevail against you. That's a great prayer to pray, isn't it? Yeah. What you're doing, you're reminding the Holy Ghost, listen, if this thing goes bad, it's going to look bad for you, not just me. And you got to defend your great name. So here's what we need. We need victory. That's a great prayer. Try it sometime. Now, Lord, we, if this goes bad on us, it's going to go bad on you. Your name's going to get smeared all over the place. If you don't heal this person, people are going to say you don't heal anymore. Oh, the Holy Ghost hears them prayers. That clicks him. Let me tell you a little bit about the Holy Ghost. I know a lot about him, which is to say I know almost nothing. <laughs> but one thing I've learned about him, when you pray or need something, exceedingly doesn't do it for him. It's not enough. Abundantly is better, but that's not enough either. He wants exceedingly, abundantly, above. When you pray a prayer and you ask for this, that's not good enough for him. He doesn't like just that, see? He's kind of greedy for good things. You pray for that and that isn't enough for him. Not good enough. No, exceedingly is good, not good enough. Abundantly, that's better, not good enough for him. He wants exceedingly, abundantly, ah. Uh, for you. Asa proves it. He says, Lord, you're going to get embarrassed if we get our faces kicked in by these Ethiopians. That's right. Have you ever seen Ethiopians? You ever seen an Ethiopian? I feel sorry for them. The nutrition thing over there apparently is very bad. And their stomachs don't develop right. So the, the poor people, when they grow up, they're very thin nowadays. I'm not talking about back then. Thin. Okay? When I was in the hospital, a disabled Ethiopian could have beaten me up. I was so weak and out of it. If you get beat up by an Ethiopian now, that's not good. You got problems. Some 90-pound guy kicking your face in? Uh-uh. Something wrong. 
Well, right here you got Ethiopians getting ready to kick these guys' faces in. These Jews. And Judah is going to fall. Well, they go to Jehovah, and he answers their prayer right here. Verse 12, he smashes them before Asa and before Judah. What happened there? They became spectators. Yeah, that's right. See, if you'll reach out with your faith and trust the Lord, the Bible says he will fight for you, and you can sit in the bleachers and watch the other guy get his face kicked in. You can become a spectator in victory. Asa and them stood back and watched it happen. How did it happen? I don't know. My guess is a bunch of a bunch of angels went down there and did, I don't know, started doing stuff. I don't know what happened. The Bible doesn't say, but we do know they were destroyed. And then after they were being destroyed, the Bible says they ran. Smart move. And Asa and the soldiers pursued them clear to Greer. Okay? Here's what we're talking about here. Here's the area. Now here's Israel up here, right? Syria's up here. Here's the area we're talking about. And this is about 20, 25 miles here. They chase them quite a ways. In addition to that, since they're succeedingly abundantly above, the Ethiopians were not only overthrown, they could not recover themselves, they were destroyed before Jehovah and his host. Notice that? God will fight for you if you will trust him. And abundantly, they carried away the spoils of the Ethiopian army, which was more than Asa asked for. Then it says they smote all the other cities near Greer, and the fear of the Lord came upon all of them. They spoiled all the cities, and there was exceedingly, exceedingly much spoil, and in Aramaic that it's translated as <laughs> See that? That's an anointed contribution. This is exceedingly abundantly above. Asa got his prayer answered and everything else answered. Why? The Holy Ghost doesn't like just exceedingly. He's not satisfied with that. Okay? I was a counselor and drug treatment centers for several years and the Christian addicts that were in these programs they had this problem right here they had exceedingly but they didn't have abundantly above most of them just wanted to stop using they just want to pray and oh, I, I don't want to be addicted anymore the Holy Ghost doesn't just want you to be healed of an addiction. But that's that's not where he's at. He doesn't like that. See, exceedingly is not working for him. He wants abundantly above that. Asa got exceedingly abundantly above what he could think or ask. More than he could think about. And more than he could ask. It says they smote the tents and the cattle and took the sheep, the camels and everything else, and they returned to Jerusalem. Okay. Total victory. The Spirit of God then comes on the prophet Azariah. He goes to Asa and he says, hey, I want to tell you something. Jehovah is with you while you are with him. Notice the qualification there. Notice the difference after Calvary. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That includes backsliders. It includes people that are down and out. It includes people in the hospital. 
no matter what you do after you become a child of God He never leaves you or forsakes you In the Old Testament the standard was different. I Will be with you Jehovah said if you're with me if you forsake me Yahweh said I will forsake you With the addition of the precious blood of Christ that is no longer the case Every backslider every person that's down and out every person that's beaten and discouraged The Holy Ghost is still right there He says to him listen since I'm with you now, be strong and don't let your hands be weak. What's he doing there? In American Christianity, we call that if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has set you free and don't become entangled again with the yoke of That's what he would say now. This is what he said 3,000 years ago. Hey, be strong. Yahweh is with you. Don't let your hands be weak. You will be rewarded in the New Testament. That is an eternal promise, and it covers every little thing you do. Even a cup of water in the name of the Lord is recorded in heaven and placed on your scroll there for judgment days rewards the littlest thing done with integrity and a good heart is recorded by the Holy Ghost and is on your account for eternity You and your work will be rewarded says the Lord When Asa heard the prophecy he took courage and like you used to be Remember when you were on fire for the Lord years ago? Oh, you loved him You couldn't wait to serve him and you were doing everything right you We're so happy You wanted to make him happy Asa is right there with you. He got rid of all the idols out of the land of Judah He brought to the house of God the things his father dedicated Silver the gold the utensils and there was no war until the 35th year of his reign How'd you like that story That's a good one Born again Christian on fire for God first love working for Jesus wanting to do the right thing dedicated ready to go unfortunately while you were doing that you were spotted in the spirit world not by the Holy Ghost Oh, he already had you the dark side saw you And they said hey, we can't have this person going through life on Fire for God. No, 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 we can't do that. We're gonna have to send them some adversity and they'll collapse I know they will. How do they know that? Because they know you like they know the back of your hand. And they know exactly what kind of temptations to give you to get you to get rattled. They know exactly what to do. Your car breaks down. Your husband cheats on you. The guy at work gets a promotion. You lose your keys. It's a million little things. That came at you when you were on fire for God and over a period of time you slowly started to fade away You got complacent with your spiritual warfare you Didn't have your antenna up like you used to have it you started focusing on all these trials the devil was dumping on you bad relationships crazy children Layoffs, heartaches, sicknesses, negative people criticizing you and running you down. All these things started to stack up in your soul. 
and you started to fade away again. Guess what happened to Asa? He got used to being comfortable, and in the 36th year of his reign, Basha, the king of Israel from the north, came against Judah and built up Ramah to the intent that nobody could come or go. What was happening there? Over all those years, people were leaving Israel because Basha was an idol worshiper. And Israel was rotten. And people were leaving Israel. And they weren't illegal immigrants. They were illegal excrements. They were leaving the country, not trying to get in. And they were going where? Into Judah. Everybody wanted to be down there. Why? They were serving Jehovah. They were living in peace and prosperity. Israel was jacked up. So Basha says, hey, I got to stop this exodus or everybody's going to leave. So he goes to Ramah, the main road between northern Israel and Judah, and he blocks it. He builds it up. He stops it. Asa sees it, and what does he do? Oh, no. He pulls an American Christian. He goes, listen, I, I'll handle this myself. I got the brains and the knowledge and the experience to do this myself. And I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to think about this myself, plan it out myself. I'm not going to consult the Lord and get an okay or a stop or a go. I'm good. I'm going to do this thing myself. Very common for Christians. He brings out the silver and gold. He goes in and he starts stealing stuff from the Lord. That's happening to you. It happened to you. You used to reserve this amount of time for God, this amount of time for church or whatever it was, this amount of time for God. And as the temptations and the pressure and the pain and the disappointments and the responsibilities and the cares of this life mounting up, you started to take time from Father that you used to give him and dispense it in other areas. He starts to rob the house of God with treasures, takes the gold and the silver out, and he sends it to who? Who? Yeah, Hananadad. He was an idol-worshipping king of Syria. To this day, Syria is still a problem. Now here's what we're talking about real quick. Here's Israel here. Here's Syria up here. And here's Ramah, which was the main route between the two northern and the southern kingdom. The king builds this city up and spends considerable time and money stopping this loss of people. He stops the immigration. And there's Syria. Okay? So here's the area we're talking about. Israel, Judah, and Syria. Well, he goes to the king of Syria, and he agrees. So the king of Syria then does what? He says, hey, you had a league between me and you, as there was between my father and your father. Hey, here, I'm sending you this money, like a bribe. And the king of Syria says, gotcha. I'll join you. Break your league with Basha of Israel so that he may depart from me. He's figuring this out himself. Where you screwed up was trying to figure this thing out yourself. Marriage is screwing up. You thought you could figure it out yourself. Oh, oh. it went bad. The job is screwing up. The business is screwing up. You thought you could figure it out yourself. So you went ahead and did it. And some of the things you did and some of the things you tried worked. Not everything you did failed. You're not a stupid person. So the king of Syria attacks the king of Israel. And it came to pass. The king of Israel stops building Ramah. 
and has to go back and fight this war with Syria. Okay? So Asa is using his mind, his intelligence, his knowledge, and it appears to be working. It appears to be working, and you have had some success using your mind, your knowledge, your experience, your understanding, and you have had some successes, and it appears to be working, and the nightmare you're going to be facing later is you're going to find out something. It's not going to work. The devil is going to outsmart you. Then Asa took all Judah, went up to Ramah, and guess what they did? <laughs> they raided the city, and they took all the assets the king of Israel had put in the city. Hey, this looks great. Asa looks like a Rhodes Scholar. He's doing great. In addition, they took all the assets the king of Israel took down there, stole them, and used that equipment to build up other cities of his. And these were the two. There's Ramah, and here's the two cities. They took the produce and product and timber and everything else over to. This thing's working great. Couldn't be any better. Asa is killing it, or so he thinks. At the time, Hanai, the seer, came to Asa. What's the difference between a seer and a prophet? Well, ra'ah is the Hebrew word for a seer, and that was a prophet who could hear in the spirit world and see in the spirit world. So a seer would have things like visions and things like that. A Nabi is a regular prophet, and they only hear from God. They don't see the other things. So a seer, by definition, is an upgrade, upgraded prophet. So God sends him a seer, top-notch. And he says, Thus saith the Lord, because you relied on the king of Syria and not on the Lord your God, the host of the king of Syria escaped out of it. Had Asa not done it himself, God had exceedingly abundantly above waiting for him again. Just like he does you. If you hadn't have decided to figure it out yourself, marry the person you wanted to marry without getting a check from God, taking a job you didn't get a check for, moving out of state, remember that one? Getting involved in a business, remember that one? If you hadn't, God had exceedingly abundantly above waiting for you in the shadows you didn't see. Jehovah was not only going to give Asa the king of Israel, he was going to give him the king of Syria and their country as well. Asa would have had the whole kit and caboodle. That's Hebrew. Had you not done it your way, and you had success your way, not everything you did was wrong. You got some benefit out of it. Don't you see how the demons work? They will give you false ideas and give you temporary benefits from it to get you to think, A, you know what you're doing, and B, God is blessing you. When in fact, the whole thing was the setup. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness. It doesn't say every good gift. Every good thing you accomplished and did is not 
necessarily from God. It could be from the devil. You got in a relationship. Oops. You didn't get an okay for that from the Lord. Everything was going good for a while. And then, guess what came to breakfast? <laughs> Hell! You decided to move out of state. You needed a change. Oop, you didn't get an okay from the Lord. You got there. People were happy to see you for a while. Things were going good for a while. Then guess what happened? <sighs> Oops, you're like Brother Mike at the hospital. Can't have a bowel movement. <laughs> Not good. See, once you do it on your own, the devil will help you temporarily. Giving you an illusion, and better yet, a delusion, that you are following the Lord. That you're getting blessed by God. And around the corner is a guillotine. Awesome. Got all the timber. He got all the spoils. Oops. But he could have had Syria and Israel. See, the Holy Ghost, he don't like exceedingly. Exceedingly is good, and he can do it if he has to. But he don't like stopping there. That bugs him. See, it's exceedingly, abundantly, not good enough. Above that, that's when he gets going. That's what he really likes. That's what he wants. If you do it yourself, you can get some temporary exceedingly. Oh, yeah. The relationship will go good for a while. Oh, he's cheating on me. The kids obey for a while. Oh, God. Now they've gone crazy. Hey. It's a delusion. Demons use good things to trick Christians. That verse didn't say every good gift comes from above. It doesn't say that. Read it carefully. Asa had a nice run there, but he could have had an unbelievable run. Then Jehovah says to him through the seer, hey, you remember the Ethiopians and the Lubims, don't you? Weren't they big? Didn't they outnumber you? They had tanks. Tank, you had go-karts. It don't matter to the Holy Ghost. He doesn't have any competition. Nobody can stand up to him. Ever. Hey, they had horsemen and chariots, right? Because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. The devil uses compliments and he tells you your anointing's cray. Gosh, you're killing it. You're very respected at your church. Yeah. You got a nice ministry. You're smart. You look good too. Sometimes the demons will carry it a little too far, like saying, you smell good. Then they then they blew it. Then you then you caught them. But most of the time they come in with just something. They figure out just what you want to hear. Hey. Girl, you're bootalicious. You are a hot. You're nailing it, honey. And it's a delusion. He's building you up to cut you down. They use good things, compliments, to get you moved over into the, just the spot they need to drop a house on you. Like the Wizard of Oz. Oz, I got a house thrown on him here. He said, you could have had all of that. And here's what God is telling you now. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. To do what? 
to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. In Hebrew, it means focus there. It doesn't mean you're perfect and sinless. Perfectly focused there. Asa, because he was intelligent, because he had had years of peace and prosperity, he had lost his edge. You know, did you ever see that movie Sniper? Did you see that movie? This uh, the sniper guy used to take a, a fingernail file. Did you see that movie? And he would he was filing down his trigger finger. Remember that? And the guy said, "What are you? What are you trying?" He says, "I I got to keep that so the feels the sensitivity has to be extremely high on that fig finger to." Blow somebody's head off. See, once you stop filing your finger there, you'll, you'll miss a target. Once the devil gets you comfortable, oh yeah. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm CNS, man. Six months. That guy's going to relapse. I didn't hear you. Yeah, you did. The devil was telling me, hey, you're clean and sober for sick. You're, you're killing this booze thing. You're over it, man. You're not an addict anymore. You're fine. You're doing great. That's a setup. They relapse shortly after they have, in their minds, overcome the addiction. Once you get a little soft and this thing starts to grow back, you haven't been filing it, the devil comes looking for you. He got Asa all these years. Hey, I'm on top of it. Peace, prosperity, it's all good. Oh, the devil was slowly, patiently waiting for him. This is going to blow your mind. Demons will wait sometimes decades to destroy a person's life. Sometimes spirits get in people's bodies when they're young and they never manifest until they're old. Some of these spirits are on assignment. They enter the person's body and they go dormant. Waiting for a specific time, a relationship, a breakdown, a disappointment. Somebody comes along, somebody says something, somebody does it. They're waiting, almost in a way like a time bomb. And the person doesn't know they're in there. I just told you about a couple that came up here from Tucson. The mother got a massive deliverance. She didn't know they were in there. When I first started to talk to her, they get in and they go dormant and they wait because they're opportunists. They plot it out, they think about it. Asa, it's all good. As soon as you start thinking it's all good, as soon as your fingerprint starts to grow back, you're going to miss a target. It's going to hit you. Asa got caught. You have done foolishly. Therefore, for the rest of your time, you will have wars. Oh, let me tell you something. If you do it your way, the demons will help you get temporary success. They will, I don't mean to use this term, I don't know what other term to use. They will bless you, so to speak. Spirits are able to remove adversity as well as they can bring it to you. So if they can remove adversity from you and lull you into an asa sleep, they will nail you 
worse later. Most born again Christians are spiritually ignorant. They think when things are going well for them, it's got to be a hundred percent God. Not realizing it could be a setup. Asa God set up. Screwed up. You have done foolishly. You could have not, not only just had Judah and Israel exceeding abundantly, but you could have had above. I would have handed you the king of Syria. No problem. But now you will have nothing but wars. And then, and then. The nightmare starts. Asa, like born again Christians. You know, the Bible says, do not get angry or frustrated when you are chastened of the Lord, because the Lord only chastens those whom he loves. Some born again Christians have something bad happen to them, or they get disciplined in some way. And they, the demons trick them into getting frustrated. They get angry. They get a little pissed off. Asa, Asa, instead of repenting and apologizing, which is what he should have done, got angry at himself. There's nothing more painful, and there's nothing that will drive you to drink or use drugs quicker than being angry and hating yourself. It will push you so fast to get relief. You won't believe it. You'll go to any vice to get out of it. Asa blows his stack, and he's really mad at himself. Have you ever been around people that get so angry when they screw up? They take it out on others who had nothing to do with it. You ever seen that happen? Asa is one of those people. He attacks God. He gets mad at God when he screws up. Happens all the time. But Lord, I thought when this happened and that happened, it was all good. I thought it was you. How in God's name did all these bad things start happening to me? The demons tell him, oh, it was God. God did that. God did that. And then he let you down. The Christian then sees that pattern and starts to see God as an unreliable, uncaring person. As soon as you get mad at God, your blessing flow from glory stops at that moment. As soon as you get mad at God and blame him for something that happened to you, it stops right there. You're finished. Asa got mad at God and took it out on God's prophet and threw the guy in prison. In addition to that, he flew into a rage and started to attack people and hurt people that had nothing to do with his mistake. Some people get so angry at themselves, they can't take it. They won't accept responsibility for what they've done, so they dump on other people. Asa trashed everybody he could get his hands on because he blew everything. He could have had it all, and he lost it. Guess what happened? As soon as you got mad at God, as soon as you falsely accused him of stuff, as soon as you start blaming him for stuff, that opened the door to the devil, and he sent spirits into your life. Asa picked up a spirit of infirmity, and he picked up a Terminal illness.
And guess what? It was exceedingly great. Why? He stole God's stuff and gave it to the king of Syria. He handled the whole thing with his own wisdom, his own knowledge, and his own experience, which was excellent, by the way. He was intelligent, as are you. He was experienced, as are you. But he made the horrible mistake without getting it okay first. And when he found out about it, that he and only he had screwed everything up, he couldn't accept it. So he had to hurt everybody around him. And when he did, and when you did that to your family, when you did that to your friends, when you did that to the people at church, when you got mad at God and blamed him for something, that gave the devil legal rights to send you spirits. He picked up the spirit of infirmity and got sick. And guess what happened? Some people get so mad they never repent. Oh, can't you see it? Hey, that's the power of anger. Anger is like almost supernatural. He was so mad that even after the devil attacked him. He would not go back to God and apologize and ask for help. Guess what he had? The New Testament would call it stubbornness. Stubbornness is a disease that will destroy every and any Christian. On my radio program, I've been on the radio for 16 years. I've done a couple dozen shows over the years at least on mega church pastors and TV preachers who have fallen. You know what happened to them? Exactly what happened to Asa. In almost every single case, the devil came to this minister, this pastor, told him what a wonderful job he was doing, how great he or she was, how smart they was, how good they were, how a great teacher and preacher they are, how magnetically person their personality is, and he puffed them up, to use a King James term, first, in every case. Then, because of that, the pastor or the preacher had secret sins in their lives that they let stay there. See? You're not thinking about your personal sins while I'm telling you what a wonderful person you are. You're not focused on that. Oh, no. No, that's the last thing you're thinking about. That's the thing that got them later. The little sin, the little foxes got on the vines, the little ones did, stole all the fruit, the little ones, not the big ones. Nobody saw the little ones coming. You can see a big fox or a wolf coming in. The little ones, no, they're harder to spot. What did he do? He went to his physicians. doesn't say what kind of physicians he went to, but Jews had physicians, but the ones from Egypt, they did witchcraft. If these were Egyptian physicians, he went to someone who did witchcraft. The Jewish physicians used holistic medications and plants and stuff like that. But either way, instead of going to the Lord, he went to man. You see that? 
it wasn't that he believed in both he had rejected the Lord and put all his faith in doctors. Let me explain something to you. If you've got a demonic illness in your body, it will you can if you catch it early enough, it will respond to secular medical treatment. But it comes back. See, you can get the cancer out of there with a load of chemo for a while. And you can go into what they call remission. But, but, it comes back. Why? The root of it was a spirit. And spirits don't respond to chemotherapy. They don't like it and they don't want the person well. But all they do is simply regroup and start over. Oh, yeah. You got rid of that insane person out of your life that you shouldn't have been with. You didn't see it at the time. You should never have had anything to do with them. You finally got rid of them. Oh, a miracle happened. A miracle happened. Guess what happened then? In the spirit world, they just simply regrouped. Oh, you got rid of the person we sent you the first time? <laughs> they just simply go get another one for you. Oh, you didn't like that total loser we sent to you and told you they were great? We got another total loser for you right around the corner. <laughs> you don't understand, do you? People get tired and quit. In the spirit world, they don't do that. Oh, he went to the physicians and guess what happened to him? He died. Two years later, he put that seer in prison. Remember that? He threw him in prison. He started abusing people who had nothing to do with it. He screwed up. They didn't. Okay? The spirit had legal rights to come in because of what he did. 24 months later, the guy's dead. And he wouldn't go back to God. He wouldn't repent. Oh, listen to me. When something bad happens to you, stop right there. Stop right there. The Holy Ghost knows all about it. He knew it was coming. He knew what was going to happen when it landed. Hey, stop and think for a second. You know, is there more to the circumstance than meets the eye? Is there a spiritual thing connected to it? <coughs> I know running's easy, quitting's easy, fighting back for a while. I, I know those instant reactions. We all have them. We're all human. <coughs> Wait a minute. There's something spiritual going on here. I'm trying to help a gal right now whose husband ran off with one of, the, one of her friends. Okay? And they have one child. So they have to uh, take the child back and forth. Okay? Right? Sharing the child. Well, the child goes to the father who ran off with the girl. And he's not a Christian. He lives in sin. Duh! What a surprise. And they drink and they smoke and they do this and that around the kid. She's freaking out. Oh my God. My child's in this environment. That's no good. You wouldn't want your child in a bad environment, would you? No one, heck no. Of course, a mother wouldn't want that to happen. And she can't sleep and she's worried. Listen, if you step back and take a look at this thing, you can see what's going on in the spirit world. A few years before this happened, they had uh, a semi-open marriage. Okay. As a counselor, 
uh, I would recommend you not do that. As a Christian, I'm telling you, when you sleep with somebody else who has demons, or your spouse has demons, they transfer into you. You can pick up transfers. You're fooling around. Eh? What a surprise. <sighs> Color me stunned. When she came in for a threesome, and he developed desires for her, not the wife. What are you thinking about? Having a threesome. Well, you say, well, I would never do that. Hey, that's, I know you wouldn't. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but there are a lot of people that have done that and have had threesomes. That's not that unusual. Okay? Just because you haven't does it doesn't mean it's not happening, okay? You're not omniscient this week. <laughs> well, listen. What happened is, if you bring in, if if your your husband, you he, he you want to please your husband and spice up your this and that or whatever you're doing for whatever reason you did it, and you let some other girl come in and you have a threesome and you have intercourse with some other girl, you could pick up a transfer spirit, and that person could ha start having a desire for the other person. Brother Mike's a genius. Well, believe it or not, that's exactly what happened. He then is now more attracted to the fill-in woman than the wife. And she was part of the initial sin. Now he left with her. Shocking. Stunned. I like to fell out of the chair when I heard it. I didn't even flinch when I heard that story. Why? I knew what happened because I stepped back and looked in the spirit world. It was a setup. The demon set her up. Now, now they're getting to where they really want to be. They're torturing her by having the husband, who has completely betrayed her, destroy the child morally and spiritually. I'm trying to get her to turn that child over to the Lord and get healed first. That's what I'm trying to do. It hasn't happened yet. That's the only way the child can be saved. I'm trying to get her to change because I'm after the child. He's dead. Why? Guess what happens? When you're famous and you look good, like one of these poor Hollywood people, they all, 99% of them die and go right straight to hell. But they have these great funerals. Yes. Everybody thinks they're great. It's, it's a party. See, God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance. God looks upon the heart. Asa appeared to be a great man and by secular standards he was a great man look at all those years of prosperity and peace he God gave him well the run-of-the-mill person in his kingdoms going hey this king is great in fact he was so great people were migrating from Israel to Judah to get down there to live there after he dies and goes to hell they buried him in his own sepulcher that he made for himself, and they laid him in a bed filled with sweet odors. Okay? That is something I didn't have at the hospital. I could have used a load of that quickly, because I'll be honest with you, this is all off the record. I wasn't smelling too good at the hospital. Yes, sir. I needed some sweet over of divers kinds. That's what I needed. And I needed some spices. I sure did. Boy, here too. He dies and goes to hell like Hollywood stars, but everybody thinks they're great. So they have this wonderful funeral for him, and it's all a fraud. 
they made a very great burning for him. Okay? This is not where you want to be. You want to have character and integrity now, not after you're dead. Mm. Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 17, Cursed be the man or woman that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart departs from Jehovah. Now this verse has been misinterpreted over the years. It's not talking about cutting human beings off and doing everything yourself. That's not what it means. You know, you need a ride. Uh, you pray to the Lord, hey, I can't get somewhere here and there. And somebody calls and says, yeah, I'll give you a ride. Okay, that's God helping you. There's nothing wrong with that. People can help you. You can help them. It's fine. Hey, Brother Mike, I need, I've got tonsillitis. <clears throat> I need surgery. Did you pray and ask God to heal you? Yes, and he didn't. Okay, well, there must be something else up or something blocking it. Is it a sin to go to a doctor and get your tonsils removed? No, it's not a sin. Hey, Brother Mike, I've got high blood pressure. No, it's not. That's not what this verse is talking about. It's talking about people like Asa who turned their back on God and forsook him and then trusted only in the arms of the flesh of humans. It's not talking about getting help from other people. You can still trust the Lord and believe in the Lord and receive help from others. Can you not? That's, that's not what it says. It says, departs whose heart departs from the Lord. He will be like the heath in the desert, and he will not see when good comes. He will inhabit the parched places of the wilderness. Listen, if you're in a parched place right now, we can fix that tonight. That's all fixable. All you have to do is the opposite of Asa in the second part of his reign. Okay? You've already been Asa in the first part, haven't you? Weren't you there one time? Oh, man, on fire for God. Oh, you loved him. Didn't you? I'm talking about you now. You were doing things right. You were a good person. You were putting your best foot forward. But the devil saw it, and he beat you down. You let your guard down. Oops, you got caught. You can be restored. The Holy Spirit is looking for you to be not just exceedingly restored. No, that's not enough for him. Uh -uh. He doesn't like to stop there. It bothers him. It's exceedingly abundantly. That's good too. That's for you, but that's not enough for God. In the deliverance ministry, one of the heartbreaking things you run into here is people who come in for their initial deliverance and it goes well. I've had hundreds of cases like that. It goes well. And after that, the demons tell the person, you are doing great. You feel better, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've, you're not eating as much. You're not drinking anymore. You're sleeping better. That's the first thing I get, the email. That's one of the first ones I get. Brother Mike, after my deliverance, I slept like a baby last night. I said, that's good. We're happy for you. We love it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I go through it in that order. Then I explain to them, remember that list I sent you? Okay, we need to renew our minds and finish our deliverance because God's got a call on your life and a destiny for you. And one deliverance session, although it went well and we're grateful for it, and that's, our, that's what we do here, we're trying to get that initial session booming, and in most cases it happens. That's not the end of this thing. 
the devil will tell you because things are going well like Asa. Hey, you're killing it. Look at all these years. No wars. You're fine. You got it, man. You're so smart. You can handle anything. Anybody with this track record, gosh, you're on top of it. Asa, you got it, baby. Oops. Don't you see it? Can you see it? Oh, man. As soon as you think you're, you're doing well, as soon as you think things are going well, all of a sudden, you'll get hit. And you do the if you do the opposite of Asa tonight and accept responsibility for making mistakes and screwing up and sinning, which we all do, by the way. If you're not in the boat by yourself. Oh no, we're all human. Everybody makes mistakes. Father knows that. If you'll do the opposite of Asa and repent and come to the Lord. You'll get Syria and Israel and Judah exceedingly, abundantly, above. Turn off the lights there. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit is here tonight, and he wants us to make him happy. He's here tonight with the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That equates to miracles, healings, deliverances, and restoration. Lord, I'm not trying to be critical, but there's a couple of asas in here tonight. They started out great. And you were so happy with them and so pleased with them. And the devil saw it and brought them adversity, trials, stress, and pressure, bad people, uh, broken down cars, negative co-workers, critical family members, whatever it was. And they lost their first love in the Holy Spirit is an expert in restoring, restoring their first love. And Jesus mentioned it in Revelation. We need a restoration of first love. Father, in Jesus' name, no one in this room tonight is going to die like Asa. Angry, bitter, frustrated, Mad at you, Lord, frustrated with you, disappointed in you. No, no, that will not happen. Asa died and was lost. No one in this room will be killed. No one will die and no one will be lost because every single person here who started out strong and stumbled over adversity is going to take responsibility for it and repent of it tonight and be delivered and healed. Every single one of them. There's no asses leaving this building tonight. I'm asking you, Lord, for mercy on my friends. I'm asking you for mercy on the people you love, which is every single person sitting in this room, without an exception. Lord, I know that you forsook people in the Old Testament when they forsook you first. If they wouldn't forsake you, I know you would never forsake them. But I know even though someone is backslidden or discouraged or has lost their first love, now, because of the cross of Calvary, you never leave them and you will never forsake them. That's what you said, and I believe your word. What you said is the law of the Lord. 
each person in this room right now who's an asa starting out well but now you're in a skid now you're struggling I want you to raise your hand so I can pray for you right now just lift your hands up you started out like asa and in fact you remember that years ago you remember it almost like like it was a honeymoon you remember it years ago almost like oh like you could like it was the best time of your life. Do you remember that? You still can feel it. You still see it. You still keep your hands up. You still feel it. You still see it. That time when you were like Asa and you started out so great. And then you made a mistake. You let your guard down. The devil saw you first he came in with blessings then he came in with the hammer and you didn't see it coming but tonight thank God because of this story from Asa in God's holy word you now see it you now see it and since you now see it the spirit of the living God is going to allow you to overcome it and you're going to return to your roots. Do you know what your roots are? Listen to me. It's your first love. That's your real roots. It's not, in, it's not at home when you were a kid. It's not grade school. It's not back in the old days. No. Your real roots in life are right after you were truly born again. You truly became father's child. And you had your first love. That is your real root. Not the other. And you're going to take responsibility that Asa wouldn't take. You're going to do the opposite of him. He is our example tonight. You're going to come right down here in the front so we can pray for you. And you're going to take responsibility for being like the opposite of Asa. And you're going to do the right thing because you are not going to open a door for a spirit of infirmity to get in your body and give you a disease. You are not going to do that. You're not going to give the devil a chance for that. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. You're going to take responsibility. You're going to apologize to the Lord. Of course you apologize. You would apologize to anybody who loves you, whom you've hurt. You would apologize to anybody that you care about, wouldn't you? Of course you would. That's just common courtesy, to say the least, at a minimum. You're going to tell him you're sorry because you are sorry. Are you not? Yes. You're, you're sorry. Yes. And you understand. that You are a very loved person. It was the devil that tricked you. He fooled you. He fooled you. And listen, we all get fooled. Here and there. Nobody's perfect. No one. Trust me. Nobody is. We all need help sometimes. All of us. And we can all apologize and receive the Holy Ghost again. Yes. And He can just come right in easily. He just comes right in. You just open your heart and he comes right in. There he is right there. He come right in. Help me with this gal. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. She has a sensitive spirit. You just, he just comes right in. If you open your heart and relax, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Here's how you do it. You just lovingly say it. Lovingly. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Right, Eric? You just tell him you're sorry. You just tell him you're sorry and you win it. You're just telling you're sorry. That's how you do it. I'm just sorry, Lord, and I love you. I want my first love back. I've wasted too many years on broken relationships, bad advice, hurtful people. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Just say it. Just say it. I'm helping you right now. Just follow me. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Just forgive me, Lord. I'm going to lay aside my asa pride. My asa arrogance, I'm going to lay it aside right now in the name of Jesus. 
I'm going to lay it aside right now. And this spirit of infirmity that got in my body, I opened the door. I got caught like Asa. And this spirit's trying to give me a disease. He's trying to give me a disease. He's trying to give me a disease and I won't receive it. I'm not going to receive it. I want this thing out of my body and my brain and my soul right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of me right this second. I command you to come out of me right this second. That evil spirit in my body that tells me to use food as a comfort. I repent of that and I command that evil to come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. I lay aside my pride now, Lord, and my spiritual pride. I let it go right now. I'm letting it go now in Jesus' holy name. I command you to loose me, Spirit. Let me go right now. I command you to let me go right this second. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Let me go. Go. Let me go. Had a girl. You're telling me to let me go in the name of Jesus. I command you to let me go. Come out of my womb. Right this second, you rotten spirit. I command you to come out. I command this evil spirit that stole my first love. I want you out of my body right now. Get out of my body right this second. All these people that criticized me and ran me down, all of them, from my childhood forward, I want them gone. I release them to you, Lord. There it goes. Here it comes. Here it comes, all this verbal abuse, all this sexual abuse, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out of me right this second. There he is. There he comes. Here he comes. Here it comes. Come on out, devil. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Asa, come out. Asa. Asa, you rotten spirit. The spirit of Asa. Come out. The spirit of rebellion. Asa, the spirit who's mad at God. Come out right now. Get out, buddy. There he comes. There he comes. Come out in Jesus' name. Come, there it comes. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' holy name. I bind your power, you rotten spirit. I bind your power, spirit. Hold that. Come out in Jesus' name. All these disappointments. Well, all these heartaches. All these sadnesses. There it is right there. Come on. There it is. Let your tears go. Hurry. There it is right there. The Holy Ghost on you, sweetheart. That's a Holy Ghost on you. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of her disappointments and heartaches. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Right now, the people who betrayed you, go. The betrayers. The betrayers. They said they would help you. They lied. I forgive them and I release them now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out. There it is. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of the Lord. There's the Spirit of the Lord. Here comes the Holy Ghost. There he is, sweetheart, honey. You're a very loved person. Just receive it. I receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Keep coughing. Take a cough. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. There it comes. Come on out. Satan, Lucio, get out of it, buddy. Come out, Asa. 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 Asa, come out. Arrogance. Pride. Asa. Come out. Hold that, honey. Let your tears go. Come on, you're getting healed tonight. Asa, I bind your power. Come out of her mind right now. Get out. Lord, give this man of God his tears back. Give him back his Holy Ghost tears. His tears. Holy Ghost tears. And heal. Their mom, I'm hearing voices. Demonic voices. Two years. Two years? Who were you dating back then? I was dating a doctor, and he sexually abused me. Dr. Jack Hawks. Jack Hawks. Jack Hawks. Yeah, that's him. Close your eyes. I just take a big breath. Big breath. There he is. Come out, Jack. Jack, come out of her. Come out of her lungs. Come out of my heart. Adultery, come out. Keep breathing. 
Come out, are you adulterer? Go. You pervert? Come out, buddy. Come out, sin. Evil. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Come out of there. Dr. Jack, come out. The spell you put on her, come out of her. She repents. She repents. Lord, I'm so sorry. I should have never even shaken his hand, let alone slept with him. I'm so sorry. God, Lord Jesus, give me back my tears. Give me back my tears. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Stay here. Come out. There, there, keep coughing. Come out. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes. Every spirit, come out quickly. Every spirit, come out of her. Come out of her stomach. Food demon, come out. Go. Come out of there. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. Verbal criticism. Verbal abuse. Every ugly man that said negative things to you, bossing you around, dominating you, controlling you. Come out. Come out. Come on out. No, you're not done. Come out of there, devils. Right now. Don't you try to hide. Come out of her right now. There it comes. Next. Come out right now. Come out right now. Fear and anxiety and stress and paranoia. Hi. What's your name? Oh, when did this start? In Jesus' name, go. A long time ago. Go. You mean like two months or years? Years. And, and who was there? Who hurt you? There's so many things in my life that can't Who was the first one? Um, when I was eight years old. Um, what did he do to you? He just exposed himself to me. But, but I got blamed. And, my parents and your parents blamed you? Huh? Your parents blamed you? Well, they, they treated me like a... Spirit like you had, like you, like you, what? what? Yeah, like, like well, like a puppy. They, they never the talked about it. But that's the not the worst. Jesus. The worst Go. thing has been the last three Leave and a half now. years. Um, Leave restoration. What happened? I did something. I, I wrote an email. Right now. And I've had persecution and oppression ever me. since. Get my body. Go. I wrote an email about Go. a neighbor. Go now. I've had persecution and oppression ever since. From, from the neighbor? No, Leave from lots now. of people. Lots and lots of people. Okay, can you remember their names? Why did they mention you? No, I don't, know, you? I don't know any of them. They can just show up every Can you see their faces in your mind? Kind of. Okay, now I'll tell you something. In Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you. And pray for those who despitefully use you. Watch this. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pray for every person that comes to your mind who is persecuting you. Go ahead. And ask the Lord to bless them and tell the Lord you forgive them. Still, you know it's true. And so doubt up here so that you don't believe it. Also, the cost of the cover, but you can do the will. So, why do you say Come out. Come on out. Come out. Get out of there right now. The rest of you come out of there right now. Every ugly man that ever touched your body, get out of there right now. There he comes. There he comes. Come on. Bless them, Lord. Forgive them. Have mercy on them, Lord. Forgive them. Please help them, Lord. Please help them, Lord. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive my parents and that guy who exposed himself. I forgive him. I forgive him in the name of Jesus. I forgive him. Oh, come on. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. What was that guy's name? What was that guy's name? What was that guy's name that exposed himself? I don't know. Teenager. Teenager. Okay, ready? 
Father God, that spirit that attacked her when he pulled his pants down, that spirit, come out right now. Come on out. Breathe. Breathe. Take a breath. Breathe again. Come out of her lungs. I forgive him. I forgive my mother and father. I forgive all these persecutors. And I repent of holding grudges and ought. Satan, come out of me now. Come out now. Quickly. Come out. Out. Go. Come out. No. Come on out. Who's the worst person that abused you? What do you mean you don't know? Who was the worst thing to happen? Worst thing happened? All these people that come into my life because trust me, they show up and everything. Yeah, that that sounds like a curse. Do you know if somebody ever put a curse on you? I don't know. Did uh, somebody with any spiritual power ever get mad at you or hate you? I don't know, but I've seen the devil in some people's eyes. Did they ever hate you? Do you know if anybody ever said they hated you or put a curse on you? I don't know. Have you ever been married? Yes. How many times? Uh, I was married once and I had a relationship for 20 years when we were oh. married. After the marriage? Yeah. Who was the first husband? Uh, Wayne. And he, uh, I what did he do to you? It was my choice to leave him, and I should have. That was my fault. Why did you leave him? Why? I got frustrated with all these choices in our relationship, and I, I just turned away from the Lord, and I, I thought I had, you know, somebody was building up my, my, my esteem, and I took it for granted that I should use it in a bad way and leave him. I left my children. I left my kids. What was his name? Wayne. Wayne, okay. Raise your hands. Lord Jesus, I'm so incredibly sorry that Satan tricked me and lied to me and I believed him. I listened to him and I believed him. And that spirit that was lying to me got into my brain and he's been lying to me ever since. And I lived in adultery for 20 years. That was the spirit lying to me again. I am so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. Let them go. There it is. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. Go. Let your tears go. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so Come out. Come on out of there. Come out. I'm so sorry. Let your tears go. You spent decades listening to Satan and not your Heavenly Father. And tonight, you're going to repent. Come out. There it is. Come on. Come on. Out. Come on. Let your tears go. Release them. I'm so sorry, Lord Jesus. I love you. I'm so sorry, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. I'm so sorry. I love you. Restore me. Restore me. Restore me, Lord. Help me. I love you. You spirit of fear, I bind your power. I command you at the count of three to come out of the woman of God. One. Two. Three. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Just repent of it. Uh, tell him you're sorry. Tell what happened to you? Um, I've been coming for a couple weeks. Um, What's your new problem? A lot of things I feel like doubt, anxiety, depression, lust, um, pride, self righteousness. How old are you? 18. 18? Wow. And were you hurt real bad when you were in grade school? Yeah. What happened? 
my mom and all kinds of bullying in school. And oh, you got bullied in school? Yeah. Okay. And then how about preschool? Were you hurt bad when you was little? Um, I don't remember preschool that far back, but my mom was still the same way in preschool. Were you ever molested? By my mom, yeah. Was it fondling? Yeah. Was it intercourse too? No. Okay. And where's your mother now? Um, she's at home. She's come here before. Okay. And how old were you when you got fondled? Um, uh, third, fourth grade. Fourth grade? Okay, what's your mom's name? Lila. Lila. Okay, ready? Now just take a big breath and relax. Like that. Oh. Okay. Father God, you see this 18-year-old man standing here? I know you've got a call on his life. I know you've been hunting for him. The Lord Jesus, when he was young, when he was young, his mother did something for him because she has lust demons. She has must be. When she touched him, one transferred in. One transferred in. He's in there from mother. And tonight, we are going to do exactly what you told us to do, Lord. We're going to forgive mother. We're going to forgive her. And ask you to bless her. <laughs> and we're going to release her lust demons. We're going to release them now. I release my mother from my soul and give her to the Lord. And I let this lust demon come out in the name of Jesus. Lust, low self esteem, fear. Out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Spit that gun out. Love you, man. Love you. Hey, God, God's got a purpose for us, man. Amen. He, he, he healed you up to bring you back, bring us back. We're going to fight the enemy. Yeah, man. It's coming, that, that big revival. It is coming. That's why you had to go through this. Because it's not going to be easy. I know. I love you. I love you. How are you? Okay. Somebody hurt you when you were young. What happened? Um, my mom and her boyfriend raped me from the age of 13 to 16, both of them. And my mom's still part of my life. So I grew up with, I grew up with um, an emptiness that something was wrong with me. Because if my own mom could do that for me, I wasn't good enough. So I yeah. haven't been good enough for anything. Yeah, that's perfect. No, that's easy to fix. I'm also having some medical issues, though, too. Yeah, no, that's, we'll do that later. Okay. okay. That's, that's yeah. from the same deal. Okay. Uh, in Mark chapter, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says to love your enemies and to bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. Now, what's your mom's name? Susie. Susie. And the guy, what was his name? Uh, Bill. Bill and Susie. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for having bad feelings when I was younger about my mother and, and her boyfriend. I'm asking you to forgive me. Because at one point, I hated them for what they've done to me. They not only let spirits into my body, they ruined my self-esteem and gave me a low self-concept. They raped me. And today I choose in the name of Jesus to forgive them. Both of them. I forgive them for raping me. Go, go, go. 
I forgive them for raping me, my mother and her boyfriend. I forgive them right now. Let your tears go. I forgive them right now. Let your tears go. Come on. Don't you hold back. You're supposed to get healed tonight. There it is. There it is. And I want their perverted spirits and the spirit of infirmity out of me. Come out of me. Come on out. Come out now. There he comes. Yeah. You don't tell me no, devil. You tell me yes. Yes. You tell me yes. Yeah. Come out of there, you rapist. Come out, you rapist. Right now, come out. Take a big breath. And breath. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Bill. 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 Come out of me. Hatred for Bill. Come out. Hatred for Bill. Hatred for my mother. She betrayed me. And I forgive her. Mother, come out now. I'm turning my life over to the Lord. I'm releasing my mother. I'm releasing Bill. Come on out now. Come on. Get out of my body right now. Yes. Get out of my body right now. Come on, sweetheart. This is your night. You're supposed to get healed. There it is. Go. There it goes. There it goes. Did you forgive her? Yeah. Okay. Take a breath of blood. Come out. What's your mom's name again? Lila. Lila, come out of your son right now. Come out of your son. Come on. Come out of your son. In my back right here, and I feel yeah. something in my nose. Yeah, that's down there. It's in my back right here, and it's just oh, Excellent. They move around, they get scared. They're trying to distract you. You're doing what you're doing is working. Go. Come on out. Go. Lila, I want all your demons out of your son tonight. Come out of that body right now. You come out of his nose right this second. Come out of there. Get out. Come out of that nose. Come out of that nose. Come out of there. Go. Go. Come out of his back right now. Go. Come out of there, you pervert. Pervert, come out of his nose. Come on out. 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 Come on out of there. Get out of that body. Come out. I want my mother out of my body right this second. I'll turn my life over to the Lord. I don't need a mother. I have a Heavenly Father. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Get out of my body. Come on out. Come out. Satan, come out. Satan, lose your hold. I just get mad at him. Satan, lose your hold. His mother molested him when he was four. Come on out. How you doing? What's going on? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, good. Good. Well, I was talking to Connie, and she did a little bit of praying for me, but I have a uh, Basically, it's uh, like a couple of sores I haven't had have for like six years. You know, it goes by the name of Gallon. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, uh, that's not the problem. That, that's a, there's no, uh, it's not medical, that's demonic. That's what? It's demonic. I believe it is. If there's no more gallons, that's a fabricated bones. It's demons. I believe it is. They gave it to you. I believe they did. Yeah, but uh, there was an opening. Yes. Like Asa. So let's go back. Here. When you were a kid. Somebody hurt you when you were in preschool or grade school? You just bullied people. 
Um, Somebody hurt you bad? Were you verbally abused? Well, As a kid? I was had a very dominant controlling mother, okay. for one thing. Uh, I never had any, like, molestation or anything so like that. Was your mother uh, verbally controlling? Your oh, mother yeah. oh, verbally yeah. Oh, yeah. bossing you around, oh, trying to control you? To this was day. Was she critical? What's that? Was she critical? Oh, yeah. Criticizing? What's yes. her name? Uh, Brainy. Brainy? Brainy. Okay. Now, listen, that's what happened. Uh, a spirit got into you from your mother. And it's a spirit of rejection. Your mother had one. She had one. Yeah. I believe that. When she was little, somebody hurt her real bad. Her, her mother. mother. Her mother. Her mother. Just like her. Bingo. Bingo. Generational. Figures. Right. Click, click, click. Yep. yep. Right. What's your mother's name again? Um, Brainy. Brainy. Okay. Now, do you know how to relax? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just take a big breath and relax. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now just I relax. Now just you know I, was, I, 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 I probably started. You know, I came back to God. You know, I, I grew up Catholic, and I came back to God right five, five years ago. And then, as of the last probably year and a half, I, probably a year and a half ago, I got my first deliverance through watching YouTube videos. And then I've got into self deliverance, probably delivered myself. I don't know, maybe twelve more demons, and then I still have this issue. And so, oh, that's I, okay. Now, what you're doing is right. Uh, it's like layers. Mm -hmm. So the Morgellon spirit, the infirmity, he's down here. You just haven't got to him yet. That's all it is. But it started out with your mother. She's still in there. That's tied into the Morgellons. Mother. It came from grandmother. Grandma. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now in Matthew chapter 5, it says, Love your enemies and bless those who curse you. Yes. And pray for those who despitefully use you. Now the reason your mother tried to control you like that is because deep inside she was very hurt and very scared from her mother. And the demons told your mother that if you can control your environment and control your son, you'll be safe. You'll be okay. But it's a lie. She wasn't safe and okay. And the son got sick. It's a trick. They're always tricking. It was a whole trick. It's a trick. But it's a spirit of rejection that came from your mother. That's your that's, that's your first line of offense. Now, do you have any bad feelings about your mother at all? Emotions, negative emotions. When you're around her now, do you feel negative? Well, she's still the same way she's always been. So oh. she brings back up, but I don't. I don't. I, I feel like I've forgiven her. I don't have, have any negative emotions towards her. I believe that you know no. I was supposed to honor my mother and my father. My yeah, mother's no. passed on, but my mother. No, now. I know that, but I mean, when you're around her, do you sense or feel anything? Like yuck. Only when she starts in on me again. That's what I mean. When she continues and then... No, just... she can't stop it because she has a rejection demon. Yes. That's what she does. Yes. You know, it's a leopard has spots. Right. She won't stop that because she's not delivered. Right. When right. she tears into you and starts telling you, you should do this, you should do that, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? Do you sense or feel anything? Uh... Do you feel like, hey, I got to get out of here? Oh, yeah. yeah it, brings, it brings up anger. And, I've got it. You know. Bingo. Now, her rejection spirit is working yours. That's where those feelings come from. It's him. She's a setup, a plant. Go see your mother. Click.
I believe that. I believe that. Stop all your deliverance and only get him out. Let's focus on him. I didn't, him. I didn't know he was a spirit of rejection. That's him. Hers and his work tag team wrestling. And then these emotions you're having, that's him. Not you. And God knows that. He knows it's not you. That's why you have that's why you have the anointing and that's why you're loved. He knows it's not you. It's grandma. I believe that. I believe that. It's grandma. Shut the deliverance down. Except for one guy. One person. Will you do that? Huh? You said don't put deliverance down or no, shut it down. Stop Should it. I? Except for him. Except for him. Just focus on him. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. Now let's set this thing up now. Raise your hands. Lord Jesus, I am uh, standing here praying with Brother Mike right now. And I uh, have I have ought for my mother. And her rejection demon is using my rejection spirit. And he's generating ought, which generates anger. And I get frustrated and angry with my mother when she starts to demonically abuse me again with her mouth. And tonight I'm going to repent of that. I'm going to repent of that sin right now because I know that is not my mother talking to me. That is the demon from her grandma, her mother, my grandmother. That is not my mother. And all my life, I've been tricked into thinking that was my mother criticizing me, and it never was. It was him. And he's made a fool out of me. And he's tortured me for years. And tonight, it's coming to an end. I see what he's doing now. It's not my mother, and I can release her from my soul. I can completely forgive her because I know it's not her. And I repent of this demonic merry-go-round. I forgive mama because I now know it's not her and I also know it's not me. That anger and that frustration and that desire to run from my mother is him. And I hate him. And I have the anointing and the love of God on me. And I'm going to cast this ugly spirit and this art out of my life forever. And I'm starting tonight by forgiving my mother and releasing her right now. Because that ain't my mother talking to me. That's a rejection demon. And I'm not listening to him anymore. You rotten devil, I bind your power in the name of Jesus Christ. I place a curse of failure on you, and I command you to stop tormenting me. I hate your guts, and I want you out. Out of my body. I want my grandmother and my mother out of my soul. I have a heavenly father. I don't need a mother or grandfather or grandmother. I don't need any of my relatives. I have a heavenly father. Satan, I bind your power. Come out of me. I want you out in Jesus' mighty name. Say it. I want you out of there. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' name. I want you out. Get up. Hey, how'd that go over? What happened? A lot came out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You speak in tongues? You don't? Okay. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You with her? You know her? Oh, good. Stay here with her. Your daughter? Oh, stay here. Close your eyes there. Close your eyes there. Now, listen, your mother, you related to her? Oh, the two daughters? Oh, perfect. 
Listen, uh, your mother's in, in deep trouble. Here's why. She has rejection demons. And it comes from years of abuse. These spirits get into the person's body and then they draw in abusers. So the person mysteriously and miraculously keeps meeting people who can do them no good and eventually hurt them. And by the time they get her age, they've got a laundry list of them, of, of people who have mistreated them and betrayed them and verbally abused them and criticized them and lied to them. That, that scene, scenario. See, he, he's drawing them in. See, if, if a person has a spirit, that spirit can communicate with this spirit. So it's like a homing device. It, hit her. You come in. Hit her. See, they draws in abusers. See? And the only way to break this curse off her is if we do Matthew chapter 5. It says, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who despitefully use you. She's got a long list. Uh, so she has a long list of that. She has a, oh, a laundry list, list of, see? Yeah. And then, when she was young, she would listen to demons. She listened to them. And she left her first husband. She said, there it is right there. That's a wound crying. Come on out. Let your tears go. See that wound? The Holy Spirit's removing that wound as I was talking to you. Come on out right now. She has the anointing on her right now, so you take advantage of it when they have the anointing. So she has a nice anointing. She just doesn't use it. Come on now, sweetheart. Let it go. Let your tears go. Come on out. The spirit of infirmity. Come out of that body right now. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that body right now. Come on out of her. Let her go. Every ugly man. 20 years of adultery. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out. Come on. You hate him. You hate him. He ruined your mother's life. He ruined her life. She's been unhappy and hurt for decades. And you've had enough of it. Come Come on. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. I release these abusers from my soul right now. I let them go. Out they go. Breathe. I forgive them. I bless them. And these fear spirits that got in, giving me anxiety, sleepless nights, bad dreams, Fear of the future. I bind the spirit of fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now come out. Take a breath and go. Come on out. Go. Go. Come on out. Come on out. Come out there. Come out. Come out. So go now. Come out of me. Come out of me. What's the name of that guy she lived with? Jack. Chuck. Jack. Jack, you come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Jack, come out of there right now. Adultery, deception, delusions, false love, fake love. He never truly loved me. It was a setup. Come on out, Jack. There it is. It's wounds from Jack. Come on out. Let your tears go. Jack, come out of there. Come on out. Come out. Abuse. Yes, abuse. Come on. Out it goes. Out it goes. Come on out. Come on out of there. Go. I forgive Jack and I release him from my soul. I have to let him go tonight. Go tonight. Go tonight. Come on. I want all Jack's lies 
his wounds and his spirits out of me out of my body come on get out of there come on out what you need Sarkis. Sarkis, what's wrong with you I got the last come out delivered of Oh, good. I took 67 tablets. He wanted to kill me. The enemy wanted to kill me. I'm taking people over to three, four pills. I was taking 14 a day for four days straight. And now I've been clean for seven days. After I got delivered, I took clean. No, eight, eight days. I just need more power, more strength, more, more. You're, you're looking for a greater anointing. I've, I've, now, uh, I've learned how to pray in tongues. You did? Yes. Okay, let me hear it. Okay, stop. Now that's you have your gift of tongues, but it's partially blocked. Okay, so let's fix it, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now just follow me. Yes, sir. Koraba. Koraba. Kerosaka. Kerosaka. Bekoba. Bekoba. Sandoria. Sandoria. Fukafa. Fukafa. Shendoli. Baku. Baku. Now, did you happen to notice I was speaking in short syllables? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I was using different syllables? Yes. Did yes. you notice that yours was click, click? Click, click, click. Yes. Same yes, ones? Yes, yes. Got yes. it. Now, let's yes. try it again. Okay. Stay here. Okay. Now, let's try it again. Well, this time, you follow me, and then you use your language, but use different syllables. Ready? Yes. And the perfect, like that, just like that. Keep going. Keep going. How you doing? What you need? Emma. Emma. Yeah. What you need from the Lord tonight? Why are you here? I am a uh, to the other guy and never come to me back again. Uh, say that again. Uh, I want protection. God protect me always and never devil come to me back again. Oh. I need protector, protection from from the Lord Jesus Christ. No, I mean from what? Yes. For, for, for fear, for, for fear, for hell. You for, have fear. My, uh, I have kind of uh, not, no, no fear. I have anger. How'd that go? <laughs> yeah, crank it. <laughs> now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, but not the loud like he. Huh? Yeah. Come here. Oh my God. Yeah, go, go, go. Okay, let's hear. It. Oh, okay. Stop. Stop. Yeah, that's good. You have you have a legitimate gift of tongues, but it's blocked. Yours is like his. It was it was blocked. And help me. And it's easy to fix. Help me. Yeah, I help you right to. now. His just got fixed. That's why I'm here. And now, uh, repeat after me. Borava. Borava. Kelo Sata. Kelo Sata. Nekoma. Nekoma. Andoria. Andoria. Fula Shate. Fula Shate. Bekoba. 
Now, did you happen to notice that I was speaking in short syllables, but I was using different ones, different syllables? Notice that? Yes. Let's try it again, and this time you follow me, and then you add some syllables from your language, but make do use different ones. Okay. Ready? Yes. Korashata, Velova, Alomushi, Konde Shebe, Bekovala, Orabo Shiva, Andarama Se, Karabo Shatarama. Good, just like that, different syllables. Hola Shimurada, Velo Shatimu. Good girl. Raise, speak it out. Kora Shimulata, Andoramo Shivele, Kalola Shata, Hola Shandora Moshipe. Hola Shatama, Andorama Shandora Shandrevia, Hello Kara Ramoshim Damo Shadava, Andorava Shile, Alova Shata, Deloma. Good girl. Keep going. Different syllables. Keloma Shandorava, Gorava. Hers just got fixed. What's that? Hers just got fixed. Gorama Shandorava. Okay, now. I'll show you how to draw in the Holy Ghost, okay? Speak in tongues like you were, only put a little hum to it. No, they came home last Friday and his mom. Last Here's Friday mom. They, they came home, they prayed at me, I start speaking. Did you start speaking in tongues? Yes. Let's hear it. Perfect. Per now. Now, start, uh, speak like you were, only put a little hum to it, and sing the Lord a worship song, like this. Good girl, keep going. Ore moshe vola, ondora va. Now put a little house to it and sing him a love song. Ore velola, ondora vora. Ore moshe vola, ore moshe vola. Ho. You just put a little hum to it and sing him a love song. Your mother's doing it. There you go. Sing it out. Ora moshe Singing in tongues draws in the Holy Ghost. Ora moshe Ora Ora How's this girl doing? She's got a wound that she wants to hold on to. Oh, what's the wound involving? Kundalini. You got Kundalini? How'd you get it? At church? Uh, I think maybe maybe at a prophetic church or maybe either like when I take massage therapy and they talk to me. Oh. You know, chakra. Okay. So either one of the two, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it could have come from either. But normally that's not the that's not the root problem usually. Usually no. Uh, now, were you hurt real bad as a kid? Yeah, I remember we had the, the counseling session. My dad um, beat my mom and she, she died. Now, did you forgive them yet? Did you forgive him yet? Did you get his demons out of there? I think so. His murder spirits? I think so. Yeah. And these kundalini spirits, did you go to a prophetic church and have somebody put their hands on you or go through a fire tunnel or yes. something? Yes. You did that? Yes. Okay. Did you repent of that? Yeah. You did? Yes. How did you repent? I asked for forgiveness and I cried. And okay, I good. That should do it. Now, I'm going to ask God to give you the gift of hate right now, okay? 
Lose your hands. You're, you're too passive. Okay. Lord, you see this beautiful woman right here? She needs the gift of hate. Hate for these spirits that have hurt her and made a fool out of her. Hate for these spirits that stole her childhood and wasted her years. And she, there it is right there. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. Come on, sweetheart. Let your tears go. He's coming on you right now. There it is. That's him coming out. There he comes. Come on out of her. Up. Come out. Love you. There he comes. Come on out of body right now. Love you. Thank you, Jesus. Now you see me all the time, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'll, you'll see me all the time. You'll see me all the time. All right. Come on. Come out of there. I hate you. Come out of my body right now. I said I hate you. You phony, fake Holy Spirit. Come out of there. Fake Holy Spirit, come out. Fake Jesus. Fake Jesus, come out. Fake Holy Spirit, come out. Get out of there. Come out. There he is. He's coming out right now. That's him. He's trying to resist, but he's not going to stay. You hate him. You hate him. You hate him. Come out. Get out of my body. I hate you. Get out of my body. I hate you. Come out right now. Right now. I hate your guts. Come out. Satan, I hate your guts. Come out of my body. Satan, I hate you. Get out. Get out, I said. Get out of my chest. Come out of my lungs. I said, come out. Now. Come on, sweetheart. Get mad. I hate you. You cannot play around with the devil. You got to hate him. He hates you. If you don't hate him, you're in deep trouble. Yeah, you're. You got the devil's anointing on you. It's called you're screwed, you're blued, and you're tattooed. You don't hate the devil, he hates you. Hate, hate is a powerful, powerful emotion. That's why he pursues you the way he does. If you hate him back and you fight him back, you will crush him. You will crush him. You resist the devil, he will flee flee from you. The Greek word for resist there is anthesomy. It means to oppose him. If you oppose him, he will flee from you. If you just talk to him or pray about him, he will not leave you. He will not leave you. Come on now. YouTubers, listen to me. I'll be here next Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Next Friday, I'm back. You have to oppose and fight the devil. If you don't fight him, he will overrun you. He will take your family. He will take your mother and trash her guts. He will destroy your father. He will rape and ruin your children. And he will not look back after he has destroyed you. And he will not remember who you are after he smashes you. You must be proactive with the devil. You cannot sit by and be passive. The devil will crush you. He will send you demons and they will smash you. And you will rue the day you ever gave him a second chance. You will rue the day, the day you die. Oh my God, I should have fought back. Well, you will start fighting back tonight, YouTubers. Every one of you, you will fight back tonight. Put your hand on your body right now, right in front of the computer. You're listening to me on YouTube. Put your hand on your body. Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of the Son of God, I bind your powers. I command you by the authority of the Word of God to come out now. Come out now. 
Jesus never prayed over demons. Jesus never prayed. He prayed before he faced the devil. Never prayed over the devil. You don't pray over him either. You fight back now. You take command. You use your authority. You use your authority. Behold, says the Lord, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you don't take that authority and use it, the devil will smash you like a cockroach in the kitchen. You will lose your life. You will lose your future and your destiny. And that will break the Lord's heart. God has called you to fulfill your destiny. You've been called by God. Not to sit around and Mickey Mouse around in church. You've been called to fight back. YouTubers, tonight you will fight back. If you have a mental illness, reach up and grab the crown of thorns. They pounded it in Jesus' skull so you could be healed of bipolar. So you could be healed of schizophrenia and depression and anxiety. Reach up in Jesus' mighty name and put that crown of thorns on your head. Put your hands on your head just like this, YouTubers. Just like that. And command the seducing spirits in your brain, the lying spirits in your brain. Liars, I'll bind your power. Come out. You're seducing spirits. You got me on a merry-go-round. You're always lying to me. I'm always doing the same stupid thing over again. No, no more. I bind your powers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I command you, subdue. Get out of my head. Go. Brain demons, come out. Stupidity, come out. I command this ugly fear spirit tormenting me since I was a child. He's right here in my chest and my stomach. I feel him there. He moves around. He gives me a knot in my stomach. I hate his guts tonight. Tonight I have authority over spirit, fear spirits and anxiety. I have authority over him given to me by the blood that Jesus shed. By the cross of Calvary. I have authority over the devil by the love of God and the mercy of God's Son. I have authority over the devil. I'm not serving him anymore. I'm getting a divorce. I'm rebelling. This time not against God. This time against the devil. Why? Because I hate him. Jesus told me to hate. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. If you don't have any hate for the devil or demons or sin or wickedness or failure or serving the serving the devil, if you don't hate that, you got to pay for it the rest of your stinking life. You, tonight, will receive the glorious gift of hate. What's that about? Go to the website and hit the teaching button at the top. Bingo. Go down to the article there. The glorious gift of hate. Read that article, YouTubers. Read that article. Use your authority and fight back. Eh? I will be here to help you next Friday at 7 o'clock. Why? Because we're all friends. We love each other. See you next time.